Hi, my name is Jay. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to try something I have never done before, just to try something completely different out of my comfort zone. But we are going to bake a Santiago cake. Earlier this year in 2023, Tina, my girlfriend and I, we hiked the Camino Francais route of the Camino de Santiago from St. John Pitipur all the way to Muxia, really. But we finished the whole thing and at Santiago de Compostela, we saw all these Santiago cakes. We didn't know what they were. They were really pretty. They, had, they were round with this little pattern on it with powdered sugar on top. We didn't know what they were at all but they only sold them these big cakes, so we didn't do anything about it. But one time someone was giving out samples, little bite-sized samples, and it was delicious. So we wanted more, but the only cakes we did get were at cafes for like with coffee in the morning or maybe at lunch, just a couple of times, but not every cafe had Santiago cakes. So it was really difficult to get. And we wish we could have gotten one, but there's just no way when you're traveling to have a whole cake. <laughs> Maybe if you had like five people with you, you could buy a cake and just finish it. But it was just the two of us and uh, we didn't want to buy a whole cake and there's no way to transport it to our next Airbnb and whatnot. So I decided, you know what? It's probably, maybe it's not that hard. Maybe I can look up a recipe and make it at home. And it turns out there are very few ingredients to Santiago cake and it's relatively easy to make, easy enough that I think I can do it. My background experience baking, I've, I had a house for five years. It had a brand new oven. I never used it. I used a toaster oven and just cook pizzas in there and stuff like that. I did make some muffins once, but I used a solar oven, which totally different, but I never used an oven to make a cake of any type. So this would be my first. I've never zested lemons before. So let's give it a shot. These are the ingredients, not too bad. Four eggs, cinnamon, sugar, almond powder or almond flour. That's the uh, hardest thing to get and a lemon. So literally five ingredients and it's all you should need and powdered sugar for the little decorative layer on top. But the hard part is the equipment, like a lemon zester you need. And that's the big thing we have here and just a mixing bowl. Things I normally don't have when I'm at my sister's and she has these things. So let's begin. First, we're gonna crack some eggs, fill them in here and add the sugar and then whisk it together so it's nice and airy. I like the shirt, it's a Camino de Santiago shirt, but there's a mixing bowl. Let's get the eggs in there. I've watched a lot of cooking shows and I've watched Alton Brown's Good Eats and he says you should crack the eggs on a flat surface so the egg doesn't, the shell doesn't embed in, but I find it's hard to crack open. It just like, it just makes cracks. Anyway, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. I mean, I've cracked eggs before. Oh, I don't have a place for the eggs. Hold on. All right. It's one. Oops. Two. Three. Oh. I hit that a little too hard. Okay, that's a, that's a no-go. Let's get another egg here. Let's, uh, let's try it again. That didn't work out as planned there. All right, let's get another egg out of the fridge. I've never had that happen to me. Of course, when I try to make a cooking video, it's real life. Got a new egg, let's try it again. All right, four eggs. Now we're ready to go. Next up, we need one cup of sugar. So I got my little Pyrex cup here, got some sugar. I don't know the best way to get it in there. Do I just pour it? I think that's probably the best way, right? Will that work? Maybe I use a spoon or something. Nah, it's working. Okay, so just pour it and get one cup. The recipe does say that you may be tempted to not put as much sugar they say you should follow the recipe because it really changes how it tastes. And this is a dessert after all, I think. Looks like it's about one cup even. And uh, let's 
get it in here and mix it all up and whisk it all together. Before we whisk up the eggs and the sugar together, we're going to use this lemon zester and we're going to zest this entire lemon. I've never zested lemons before. I think you just go deep enough until the white parts show. Maybe you just get the outside. I'm not quite sure. I've seen my sister and my niece do it before. I think you just, uh, I think I need something to scrape it or something because it gets kind of clogged up. We'll see how it goes. I'm sure many of you use lemon zesters before and you're going to tell me all kinds of things I'm doing wrong. Uh, wish I could have had you tell me before I start this here, but here we go. So it's a full lemon. I guess, do I go this way? Oh, what's, what's tighter than I thought? Oh man, do I go this way? No. That's, oh, oh no, I'm making a mess already. It's much harder than I thought. All right, here we go. Before I continue, I think I'm gonna get the gloves, like the cut proof gloves out because I feel like I'm gonna slip and grate my thumb and I'm gonna get blood in there and this whole thing's gonna be garbage. So let's be safe. Get my gloves on. I think I bought these for my niece so they're a little small, a little tight, but all right. So I don't know if it's the best ways to hold it on the bowl. Maybe I should use a bigger bowl. Or do I just I think I think I'll just go for it. I think I should have paid my niece to do this for me. It's much harder than I expected it to be. Thumb. Good thing I'm wearing the gloves. Does that look good? I think it looks good enough, I think. All right, let's call it. Oh my gosh, there's a whole bunch in there. I gotta get that out. I think this might be the best way to do it. For this, we'll need a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So we're just gonna get that in there. Yeah, we want a flat, flat enough, right? And then we need two cups of almond flour. much chunkier than I expected. I hope the volume is still comparable. I'd like to make this one more time, but I think I might need more almond powder, or almond flour. Okay, a little bit more. I think that's the craziest thing about this recipe. It's, there's no flour in it. It's just the almond flour. So it's gluten-free for you all out there. Now I have to whisk the sugar and egg combination together. You want it kind of airy, I guess, because the bubbles help lighten up the cake. So um, <laughs> I thought it'd be easier, but the sugar is dense. I mean, it is a cup of sugar after all. Here we go. All right, we're just gonna whisk for a while. So what have I been up to uh, since the finish of the Camino? Tina and I actually traveled Montenegro for a while. We just took a break from filming and just basically a vacation away from everything and uh, just spent time together. Because now she's in Germany working and I'm in the US. So before we leave for each other's countries, we just kind of try to spend as much time as we can and not vlog and stuff too, just so we have more time for each other. But now I'm home and I've just been catching up on movies and TV shows. All right, the video I saw, this lady had an electric whisk, but uh, I think I need to do more. Some people go out, some people go in. It's good enough. Looks pretty good though. I have to get all the sugar off the bottom. All right, let's whisk a little bit longer here. 
I'm gonna whisk a little bit longer, but first I'm gonna put the parchment paper and lightly butter the sides of this spring release pan. Which you know, if you don't know, it's one of these things where if you pop it, whoops, the sides come out. So it's easier to take a cake out of there nice and neat. But I am clumsy with it. Hold on. How do I get this back in? Uh oh. There you go. So I gotta butter it up. I'm gonna whisk it again, mix in the ingredients, and pour it in here. Perfect, my sister had this tiny piece of butter left. So I guess I'll butter up the sides. I guess if you put too much butter, it seeps out the bottom of the springform pan. Put too little though, and the cake will stick. Pan sides are nice and buttered, and this pan I bought specifically for this cake, and it came with eight inch sheets of parchment paper so I don't want to cut it out myself. Perfect. Now let's mix everything up and pour it in here and I guess I should preheat the oven first. I'm getting things way out of order. Ooh, look at the eggs nice and bubbly. Let's fluff it up some more. Instruction says it should have a nice gloss to it. I don't know what that means. Looks like as I let it sit the white's kind of separated. All right, let's add in the dried ingredients. First off, we'll add the lemon zest and cinnamon. The almond flour next. Oh, that just kind of dumped in. All right. And now we mix enough so it's all mixed together, but you don't want to mix all the bubbles out because then you, I guess it won't be as light. So it's taking a while here. It's <laughs> all right. The video I saw made it look a lot easier. I guess the one thing I should have done is broken up all the almond flour chunks. They weren't hard chunks, but now in this mixture, they're starting to cause little dry balls, chunks. I said chunks a bunch, okay. Looks like I'm getting most of it. I'm just gonna keep mixing until it's a smoother mixture and try to break up some of the remaining smaller chunks because you want any dry spots. I'm not gonna be able to get all the chunks of almonds, but I'm hoping that when it bakes, it kind of just kind of soaks through. Does it happen? I don't know. The oven is currently at 230 degrees, so we gotta get to 350, so I'm gonna mix up some of these bubbles a little bit longer. All right, let's get in the tin. So I guess I just pour it in. Hopefully the tin sealed up okay. Let's do it. I do like using these silicone brushes. Looks good actually. Except I got some stuff up there, so I'm gonna try to try to wipe some of this off. Hopefully it doesn't wipe the butter off. Oven's almost at 350 and it looks like I'm ready. I'm just gonna shake it up to get it even. And that's it. I guess you put it in the oven for 30 minutes. I don't know how to use the timer on their oven. It's kind of, so I'm just gonna use my watch and then 30 minutes from now, we'll stick a toothpick in it, see if it comes out clean and should be ready and ready to eat, hopefully. But I'll clean up this stuff right now while I wait. 30 minutes is up and I got my toothpick. So let's check out the cake here.
comes out clean. Smells good, but we have to let it cool before we can take it out. The kicks had sufficient time to cool down. Pretty sure it's safe. And I'm gonna release the spring and try to get this out and see what happens. Holy cow. Well, that came off quicker and easier than I thought it would. And the cake looks good. I want it to be nice and shallow. There was a nicer pan that was nine inches, um, nicer spring form tray, but the eight inches was perfect. Nine would have been too thin, I think, but it looks beautiful. So the next step is we gotta sprinkle some powdered sugar over it with this little decal on it. Catches, you gotta sprinkle it straight down so it doesn't get underneath, but, um, Let's give it a shot. I'm going to use this strainer and just kind of sprinkle sugar all over it and see what happens. So I'm just going to scoop two tablespoons of sugar, powdered sugar on here and then shake this. Maybe whack it and try to get it all over the cake and hopefully I get it all over. But let's see how it goes here. I don't know if it's going to start shooting out as soon as I scoop it in here. I've never done this before. One tablespoon. Generous tablespoons. Mm. Okay, that's about two. Full, here we go. How's it look? It's a pretty thick layer. Hmm. Just a bunch of balls on top. Okay. And the moment of truth where I pull this back somehow. Okay, I'm not sure exactly how to do this. Without ruining the shape pretty good mostly there you go Trying to pick it up underneath the parchment paper. There it goes. Hmm. It's pretty good. Hmm. Not bad. This is pretty good actually. Even with that much sugar and all this powdered sugar on top, it's still not super sweet. It's got like a nutty, lemony flavor and sweetness to it too though. It's pretty good. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It's super easy. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Hmm. Good. Well, thanks for watching everyone. If you ever do the Camino and you see the Santiago cakes in Santiago de Compostela and you want one, the recipe is pretty simple and it's pretty easy. 
So give it a shot. You just need the springform pan and I guess a lemon zester, everything else you might probably not already have. But pretty easy, give it a shot. If I can do it, you can do it. And it's pretty good. So thanks for watching it again. And uh, I'll have more Camino videos coming soon. All right, have a good night. I guess the bad side is Tina's not here to enjoy this with me. Hmm.